Now, there is a very interesting phenomenon and we are not going to discuss it in any detail and this is called turbulence. So, you, will, you, you must have noticed that if you turn on a tap, then first the water flows very nicely and then as it speeds up and becomes faster because gravity is pulling it right so the water flow becomes faster and faster and at some point it becomes kind of chaotic it's not so over here this is steady well not steady because it's accelerating this is laminar flow but over here it becomes what is called turbulent or the same thing you will notice when you light an agarbatti so this is like an in, it's an incense stick which you have lit up over here and you can see what's happening to the smoke so first the smoke rises up in a very nice laminar manner and after some time it becomes turbulent so basically if v is greater than some threshold v some threshold value of the velocity then the flow becomes turbulent it's not steady it's not laminar anymore how do you solve for this well for that then there is another further generalization of the laws that we have written down of the equations that we have formulated and the equation in that case is called the Navier-Stokes equation. The thing about this equation is that we know how to solve it numerically. So you can feed it into a computer and then the computer will use uh, techniques of solving differential equations and it will manage to get you a numerical solution. But we don't know how to solve this analytically. Uh, in fact, this is one of the Clay Institute problems. Clay Institute is this mathematical body which uh, has a list of problems, mathematical problems which we have been unable to solve. So, and one of those problems is the Navier-Stokes equation, solving the Navier-Stokes equation. To show that the Navier-Stokes equation has a, a smooth continuous solution which can be obtained analytically. That is one of the problems of the Clay Institute. If somebody manages to solve the Navier-Stokes equation, uh, they will be given a $1 million prize. So, good luck. But that is all I'm going to say. We are not going to say anything more about turbulence in this course. It's a fairly advanced topic. One can, there are, there are lots of literature on it. One can look it up. Okay, so that is all about uh, viscosity and related topics. In the end, one small topic I want to discuss, which again, you have done in your 11th and 12th standard, just to refresh your memory is the question of, is the topic of surface tension. This is a very important property of fluids. So since we are discussing uh, the physics of fluids, I thought it's a good idea to talk about this. What is the origin of surface tension? So let's take a container which contains some fluid. And let's look at the molecules of the fluid which are at the surface of it. Now, these molecules experience two sets of forces. Forces because of other fluid molecules and forces between, because they are on the surface, they are also seeing the air outside. So, the forces between the fluid molecules and outside air molecules. Now, when you have forces between atoms and molecules of the same kind, these are called cohesive forces. But if you have forces between different kinds of molecules, so in this case like water and air, let's say, these are called adhesive forces. And the difference between these, the fact that it's experiencing different forces of cohesion and adhesion at the surface, gives rise to the phenomenon of surface tension. So one simple way of looking at it is to take some kind of frame
and let's say there is some kind of a fluid film a thin area of fluid on this so you can think of it like uh, you know as a child you must have played with those little rings and then you dip it inside uh, some soap solution and then so it forms a soap solution then you blow through this this will become a bubble so think of it like that think of some sort of fluid surface like like the surface of this thing over here what happens and let's say let's suppose the length of this is l so there is a force this surface tension force what it does is it tries to shrink the area of this fluid surface So we define the surface tension T as the force per unit surface length. So over here the surface between the fluid surface and the outside is L. So this is F divided by 2L. Why factor of 2? Because the fluid typically has two surfaces like an upper surface and a lower surface. So L from the top and L from the bottom as well like here so this is 2L <clears throat> you can also define what is called surface energy so this is the work done against surface tension if you want to increase the area of the of this fluid surface so i would say dw is f dx but f is just t times 2l but 2 times l dx is the change in the area again two because there are two areas that you are increasing at the same time the top area and the bottom area so this is the surface energy so important thing to remember is that surface tension is always trying to reduce any surface area this is why drops are spherical and this is why bubbles are spherical because for a given volume, the geometrical shape that gives you the least surface area is a sphere. So that's why you have spherical bubbles and spherical drops. Okay. So just, you have probably done lots of calculations, maybe even an experiment in your 11th and 12th standard on surface tension. Here I'm just trying to explain conceptually what happens, what is the origin of this. So let's consider a drop of uh, liquid sitting on some surface so here is a solid surface let's say there is some drop on this so this is a liquid and this is of course the outside air <laughs> now whenever there is a an interface between two surfaces because of this difference between cohesion and adhesion, you are going to ex experience this uh, force, uh, this surface tension. So let me, so, so there is one force in this direction. Let me call this T solid liquid. There is going to be one force in this direction. let's call it T air solid because air is also fluid now and then 
there is the force between the air and the liquid so this is tangential to this so air liquid and let this angle over here be called theta so now at equilibrium all of these forces have to balance out so if i write it down in the horizontal direction then you will see that towards the left i have tas and towards the right i have tsl plus tal cosine theta <laughs> or in other words cosine theta is tas minus tsl over tal <coughs> Now let's take some three different cases and see what uh, uh, two different cases and see what happens. If TAS is greater than TSL, then cosine theta is positive. That means theta is less than ninety degrees. But if the other thing happens, if TAS is less then TSL then cosine theta is negative which means theta is greater than 90 degrees so what are these two cases the first one happens in the case of let's say water so if I have a glass container this is water then at the edge because theta has to be less than 90 degrees the water actually rises up like this and then this angle that it makes with the solid this is theta which is an acute angle it's less than 90 degrees but on the other hand if you take a liquid like mercury in a glass container then at the edge it looks like this it's like it's trying to go away from the glass and now the angle with the glass surface is an obtuse angle theta is greater than 90 degrees so these are called concave meniscus and convex meniscus why this is important is that over here in the case of water it's like the water is attracted to the glass it it tries to spread out and have more surface on the glass so if cosine theta is positive if theta is less than 90 degrees then we say that wetting has occurred the liquid tri the liquid likes to be close to the solid but a fluid like mercury there is no wetting because the liquid tries to stay away from the solid i don't know if you have done an experiment with mercury in the in the lab but if you take these little mercury droplets on the table they you can see that it is very different from water in the sense it 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 just sticks together and forms little droplets but it doesn't spread out on the solid in the same way that water does so the, the surface doesn't get wet this is also the uh, this is also how you have various kinds of uh, technology so uh, if, if you go to the market you'll find various different kinds of fabrics that are being sold uh, they are supposed to be non wetting fabrics meant for like cleaning surfaces like if you want to clean your kitchen surface uh, you find lots of non wetting fabrics that you can get for for those kind of cleaning materials so it follows the same principle those materials are such that water will try to stay away from those substances unlike glass in this case so that's one of the applications of surface structure uh, this formula that we've written over here for the surface energy this becomes very important 
from of course from an energetics point of view but also if you're interested in looking at the thermodynamics of thin films then uh, this is this is an important thing to know surface tension also explains the shapes of bubbles drops as we discussed you can also use this to find out what is the pressure inside bubbles and droplets all right so this is all that i wanted to discuss with regards to fluid dynamics and in the next class i think we will be uh, we'll discuss in detail uh, rigid body motion okay thank you